Good evening and welcome you back to Digital Domain Park in Port St. Lucie. The 2012 FHSA Baseball Finals continuing tonight. Our Class 2A state championship game between the Westwood Christian Warriors out of Miami with a record of 19-5 and, and the Trinity Christian Eagles out of Deltona with a record of 16-13. and 13. Along with Mark Shambach, I'm Marty Palman welcoming you back to Port St. Lucie in the 2012 FHSA Baseball Finals. Earlier today in Class 1A, it was the Union County Tigers from Lake Butler defeating the Holmes County Blue Devils out of Boniface 6-3 first baseball state title for Union County in the history of their program and tonight we have a Westwood Christian team trying to win its first baseball state title against a team in Trinity Christian trying to win for the third time in four years. Westwood Christian the visiting team tonight coached by Louis Padron in his third year 36 wins and 21 losses and the starting lineup for the Warriors, who will be, will be the visiting team tonight. Leading off and playing center field is number 20, Robert Hernandez. Batting second, the shortstop, number two, Jean Carlos Cardenas. Hitting third, the second baseman, number 10, Jose Suarez. Batting fourth is the third baseman, number four, Anthony Pena. Hitting fifth and playing left field, number nine, Alex Hernandez. Batting sixth and catching is number six, Josh Chenegno. Batting seventh, playing first base, number 15, Claudio Rivera. Hitting eighth in right field is number seven, Lazaro Martinez, and hitting ninth, the pitcher tonight for Westwood Christian, number 11, Nestor Lorenzo. Westwood Christian defeated Canterbury yesterday 4-1 to to advance to this championship game, and here's the defensive alignment for the Trinity Christian Eagles, Elijah Kimmig at first base, Brady Van Hook at second, the shortstop is Giovanni Tolentino. At third base, Ryan Hagee in the outfield, Tyler Lawrence at left, Nelson Garcia in center, Ryan Thompson is the right fielder. Dusty Miller behind the plate, and tonight's starter for the Trinity Christian Eagles is Daniel Moritz on the mound. Trinity Christian knocking out all Saints for Winter Haven 3-1 in last night's semifinal behind a great pitching performance by Dustin Hagee, the sophomore. So 6'5 senior Daniel Moritz, another one of those tall Trinity Christian players. They, they have a pretty good front line in basketball. And not only that, but tonight they're adding 6'8 Elijah Kimmick to the mix at first base. He didn't play last night, not in the lineup tonight, but for Trinity Christian. He'll play over at first. Ryan Hagee at third base is 6'7. Moritz on the mound, only 6'5. <laughs> Pretty good front line, I tell you. And uh, they could they could beat a lot of basketball teams. Last night started Dustin Hagee goes at 6'5. So that's your uh, some of your players for Trinity Christian. Well, small schools do draw athletes for different sports. Very unusual that it, you'll have a uh, school that caters to both basketball and baseball. And it looks like Trinity's found a formula for bringing in some top flight athletes that are dual sport players. There's Daniel Moritz, the senior left-hander tonight. His record is 5-2 and two with one save, his 11th appearance. 10th start of the season, 36 innings pitch, is allowed 31 hits. 20 earned runs, 14 walks, 60 strikeouts, and a 3.85 ERA. High ERA with one shutout on the season. And Trinity Christian, we talked about this last time, Mark, <clears throat> plays a lot of teams, 5A, 6A, 7A, and 8A during the season, which is why you look at their record and say, wow, they're only 16 and 13. But as far as 2A, they dominated their district. And in their three regional playoff games, they've outscored now four with the win over the All Saints last night. They've outscored their opponents. 33 to 7 or 36 to 7 so once again uh, that has helped get this team ready for the 2A playoffs as Trinity Christian makes its fifth consecutive appearance in the FHSA finals looking for its third state title in four years. They're a tough team to score on they pitch well and play defense well um, it's gonna be a tough battle for Westwood Christian but they're gonna send up a, a, a team that has battled in their own right they want a close ball game to get here We'll see uh, see which Trinity Christian team shows up. If they are throwing strikes, they are going to be tough to beat today. So Robert Hernandez, the center fielder, leads off for Westwood Christian. <clears throat> I mentioned defeated Canterbury Christian 4-1 to in the 2A semifinal yesterday. Right down the middle for a strike from Moritz at 0-1. Hernandez yesterday was one for four, scored two runs, also had a stolen base and an RBI. A little wild play at home plate yesterday, which gave Westwood Christian its eventual winning run. Swing and a miss, spell quickly 0-2. And, and the fourth inning against Canterbury, Westwood had runners 
at the, I think they have the bases loaded actually with one out. Or runners at the corners. The 0 2 is hit to third and off of Hagee. No play at first base as Hernandez will reach. The ball hits Ryan Hagee right in the glove. But uh, see, that will be an error charge to the third baseman for Trinity Christian. But the play at the plate, a ground ball to third. The third baseman for Canterbury stepped on third, tried to come home to get the runner for a double play. The throw beat the runner, but it was dropped by the Canterbury catcher. But the umpire called the runner out at Holmes, thinking it was a force play. Well, it wasn't. Luis Padron came out and said, um, that's not a force play. And the catcher dropped the ball. So they, the teams were in the dugouts. They brought him back on the field, gave a run to Westwood, and continued the top of the third inning that it was. And that was the eventual winning run for Westwood Christian yesterday morning against Canterbury Christian. Well, Marty, the story of this 1A and 2A divisions has been the team that makes the least errors is winning. And we'll see if Trinity can overcome this early error in the first frame. Strike on the inside corner to the shortstop, Gene Carlos Cardenas. So 0 and 1. Cardenas yesterday in the semifinal was 1 for 4 with a stolen base. Not a very big lead at first for Hernandez, and Moritz will throw over anyway. Marty, is he preferring to go with Jean Carlos? Because I, I, it flows off my tongue better to say Jean Carlos. Jean Carlos is fine with me. I'm going to go with that. <coughs> I think that was how it was explained to me anyway. <laughs> oh, I believe you. I, I, I know you do your research. That's why it's, it's easier for me to say Jean Carlos. But yeah. Jean Carlos, is if that's what his mama calls him, then we better stick with that. Strike two. It's 0-2 to Jean Carlos. As Moritz. Uh, now I got you going with it. <laughs> Daniel Moritz, according to his coach Brian Maples, is committed to Western Carolina as a pitcher. 86 to 88 miles an hour. Good slider and changeup. Nasty knuckleball as a left hander. There's <laughs> a swing and a miss. And he gets his first strikeout as he blows it by. Cardenas went out. Well, I'm very surprised given the, uh, the free base runner with the error. They did not advance the runner via the sacrifice here. Didn't, didn't take advantage of that. See if that's going to come back to bite him. So one out here is Jose Suarez, the second baseman. The runner remains at first base. A huge lift to get the first run of a ball game anytime, especially in championship play where uh, nerves are at their height. And hit foul over the first base side. And so I won to Suarez. It is uh, a windy evening here in Port St. Lucie, Digital Domain Park. But as you can see, the sun, although it is starting to set, the shadows coming in. It is mostly clear over Digital Domain Park. We had threatening weather around 2 or 3 o'clock this afternoon. And right at the beginning of the 1A game, Mark knows because he drove through it. It was actually up near Fort Pierce area, but never made it down here. But it's really picked up the wind this afternoon and evening. As it's in for a strike, 0 to that wind now blowing out. Marty, best I can describe that weather condition as I was driving down was two full miles of being underneath the waterfall. <laughs> Wind now blowing out to, it's like to right field and pretty strong at this point. As it counts 0 and 2, you see Digital Domain Park, 338 down the lines, the left and right center field, 410 to straightaway center as the pitch outside, 1 and 2. But it's cleared off nicely. No, doesn't look like any real threat of precipitation at this point, and the wind, though, is the issue. There you see the flags out in right field here at Port St. Lucie. Well, Marty, even though we're talking about 2A classification, big, good good bats on both ball clubs. We've only seen three home runs in the entirety of the tournament so far, coming from American Heritage on back-to-back -back days. Hit one in the semifinals that turned out to be a game winner, a three-run blast in the top of the eighth, and then a uh, foul pole shot and another home run in this championship game. Swing and a miss. The throw to second is not in time. A stolen base for Hernandez. Suarez is out swinging for out number two. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Moritz. Hernandez at second in scoring position with two outs. So it'll be up to Alex or, or Anthony Payne, as far the catcher, try to keep the inning going. Well, aggressive play there running with two strikes. Avoided the uh, strike him out, throw him out. Now Hernandez in scoring position with a cleanup batter at the plate, Peñas. Peñas in the semifinal game yesterday was two for three. He had a single and a double, also hit by a pitch. Now the outfield bunch toward right center. Right fielder playing 
straight away. Hagee playing deep behind the bag at third. 1-0 the count. The pitch is hit foul off to the right side out of play. It's 1-1 one one into the seats. Uh, Moritz has got blue chip type stuff out there on the hill. Running the ball up there in the low 90s. One on one the count, and the left hand of Maritza's pitch is in the dirt. It's stopped by Dusty Miller. It's two and one. I just recognized Dusty Miller's name. He was on an all star team with my son when my son was like seven years old. <laughs> just dawned on me that's who that is. Two one. It foul off to the right out of play, and it'll be two and two. Always a, a gutsy player. Played a lot of shortstop when he was younger, but looks like he's found a wonderful home behind the plate. Doing a great job for Trinity Christian. There you see Dusty Miller, junior catcher for the Eagles. 2-2 two -two in the dirt, and again Miller gets in front of it. It's full now 3-2 and two as Alex Hernandez, the left fielder on deck for Westwood Christian. Just underway in our 2A final here in the top of the first. No score between Westwood Christian and Trinity Christian. Tomorrow we will start at 10 a.m. Once again, the 3A semifinals are last two classifications of these baseball finals, 3A and 4A tomorrow. And then Thursday night, the championship games at 3A and 4A as well. And ball four as it misses low. So the first walk now for Moritz. First and second, two outs. <clears throat> That'll bring up Alex Hernandez. So two on, two outs for Westwood Christian. Here is Alex Hernandez, who yesterday was 0 for 3 with an RBI. Well, Alex Hernandez looking to drive Robert Hernandez in for the first run of the ball game. Robert Hernandez standing on second base. Make a good law firm someday, Hernandez and Hernandez. <laughs> First pitch from Moritz is fouled back to the screen, 0-1. Alex Hernandez was at 473 coming into this tournament, nine home runs, 29 RBIs, led this team in home runs second in RBIs. His average ranked at number one as well. Marty, I'm impressed though, but nervous for Moritz. He's just coming right after these strong hitters in the middle of the order. Not. Uh, not trying to nibble on corners, just going right at him. That one's high. High for a ball one on one. <clears throat> May not have found his groove just yet. Usually if you're gonna get to a, a top flight pitcher like Moritz, you gotta get him early and, and they've got two two ducks on the pond right here. One one the count. And Moritz's pitch swing and a miss by Hernandez. It's one and two. Well he's one strike away from retiring the side via the strikeout. Two strikeouts in the inning, but he's allowed to walk and an error by the third baseman, Ryan Hagee. <clears throat> hey, that wind's blowing out. I'd be playing my left fielder a little deeper right here. One, two. Hernandez was jammed Squibber. inside. Squibber to second base, and the play on to first in time by Brady Van Hook, throwing out Alex Hernandez four to three. So Westwood Christian in the top of the first. No runs, no hits, one error, a walk. Two left on base. We go to the bottom of the first of this 2A state championship game. Westwood Christian nothing. And Trinity Christian coming to bat on the FHSA network. Back to Port St. Lucie here in one minute.
All right, we go to the bottom of the first. No score. Westwood Christian and Trinity Christian coming about at the bottom of the first. And we'll give you the lineup for the home team, the Trinity Christian Eagles out of Deltona, with a record of 16 and 13. Coached by Brian Maples, leading off and playing shortstop is number six, Giovanni Tolentino. Hitting second, the right fielder, number five, Ryan Thompson. Batting third, the designated hitter, number seven, Kenneth Burkhead. Hitting fourth at third base, number 20, Ryan Hagee. Batting fifth at first base, number 22, actually pitching tonight is Daniel Moritz, number 22. Hitting sixth and catching is number 11, Dusty Miller. Batting seventh at second base, number 24, Brady Van Hook. Hitting eighth and playing left field, number three, Tyler Lawrence. And batting ninth in center field, number eight, Nelson Garcia. And number 25, Elijah Kimmig is the first baseman not in the lineup tonight for the Trinity Christian Eagles. And they will face Nestor Lorenzo. And here's the defensive alignment for Westwood Christian. Claudio Rivera at first, Jose Suarez at second, Gene Carlos Cardenas at short, Anthony Pena at third, Alex Hernandez at left, Robert Hernandez in center, Lazaro Martinez in right, Josh Denenio behind the plate. And on the mound, Nestor Lorenzo. Well, Tolentino impressed me as being a scrappy leadoff man last night. And hits it foul down the first base side, so it's one on one. Tolentino last night walked twice, also singled, scored a run, one for one officially. 1-1 one, one for Lorenzo outside. It's 2-1. Nestor Lorenzo, 5-2 this season on the mound. His 10th appearance, 10th start. 45 and 2 thirds innings pitched. Allowed 22 earned runs, 41 strikeouts, and a 3.37 ERA. 2-1 is popped up, heading towards the seats, coming over. It is playable, though. Wow, the wind really helped that ball stay within the, the playing grounds to where it could be fielded. And Ribeiro makes the catch, the first baseman for out number one. And right, that went really good. The flag, we can get a pretty good idea of the there risk. It is. That's probably a 20 knot wind right there. So one out. Here is Ryan Thompson, the right fielder. And it is at least 20 miles an hour. I would think that ball looked like it was heading towards the seats and then just pushed back in and. A, it, opportunity there. I, I don't even think it ended up on the warning track. It, it came all the way back mm -hmm. to the grass practically. One low on the way. That'll make it out of play to the seats on the right field line. It's one on one. Uh, that's why I'm so shocked Westwood Christians playing their left fielder as shallow as they are right now. Thompson capable of sending this ball on a big ride to left field. And instead he fouls it up to the right again. And it's one and two. Thompson last night was 0 for 2, struck out twice at a sacrifice. Yeah, batting in the two hole, looking for a way on base, start a rally here. One, two, swing and a miss, strike three, right by Thompson. Lorenzo throws a good fastball by him. First strikeout for Nessa Lorenzo, quickly two outs. So that'll bring up Kenny Burke at the DH. Lorenzo is a senior. Kenny Burke, we talked about last night, was a pitcher on this team the last three years. But had to have Tommy John surgery at the beginning of the season. It was out, actually, before the season, out until about a month ago. And he's been in the DH role ever since, swing and fouled off 0-1. He is committed and plans on going to Florida State still. And Florida State still would like to use him as a pitcher. Oh, and won the count from Lorenzo. And on the way, it's a little bit outside, one and one. Well, infield with two outs, playing deep. No threat of the bunt so far. Third base and well beyond the bag. One one on the way. Popped up way in the air. A lot of wind. That's going to be a tougher play than it looks. Playable in the outfield, and you're right, and it drops. Burkhead heads to second. The throw is not in time, and it, you're exactly correct, Mark. That wind wreaking havoc because it looked like it was going to be a play for the shortstop over yeah. there. Burkhead hit a big league pop-up. With that much wind, the ball started out. Looked like the third baseman was going to have a shot at it. 
then gave way to the shortstop. Then the ball drifted back toward where the shortstop came from. Landed for a, call it a win double. I don't know how you can give an error on that. I think that will be a double, you're right. So, the two out double, Burkhead, thanks to the wind. That is Anthony Pena's at third. Cardenas at short. And hit up the middle. Nice play, though, by Suarez. Throw the first in time to Rob. Ryan Hagee of a hit up the middle, and that will bring it in to the first inning for Trinity Christian. Good play up in the middle to save a run for the Warriors. No runs, one hit, no errors. A runner left on base. We go to the second, no score. Between Westwood Christian and Trinity Christian, our 2A state championship game here on the FHSA Network. Back in one minute. We go to the top of the second, no score. And Westwood Christian and Trinity Christian both leaving runners on base in the first. Two for the Warriors who had a runner on via error and a walk. And Trinity Christian leaves Kenny Burkhead stranded after he reached on a bloop double between the third baseman and shortstop. And a nice play up the middle by Jose Suarez for Westwood Christian. Keeps the game scoreless as we go to the second. Well, Marty, what, what little pregame jitters were left these teams both playing back-to-back -back days already been inside the stadium. They should all be gone, and this is now just a nine-on-nine -nine routine baseball game. Pitch and catch. Or the catcher, Josh Cedeno, fouls the first pitch back into the screen. It's 0-1. Yeah, both pitchers wiggled out of uh, jams. Less than perfect defense led to the base runners. Still on the count. The left-hander Daniel Moritz on the mound for Trinity Christian. Jammed him inside and ball to third. That's Elijah Kimmig making the play. Steps on first and Cedeno is out three and assisted for the first out here in the top of the second. Kimmig you mentioned in the first inning, six foot eight, not the tallest in his family. <laughs> One of 11 children, all born naturally at home. And yes, not the tallest? At home. Not His brother, uh, Uriah, 6'9", played baseball at Embry-Riddle College, left-handed pitcher, graduate of uh, Seminole High School. These guys not playing basketball. <laughs> One out. Claudia Rivera, the first baseman. Well, interesting enough, In Kimmick ended right. up at Trinity Christian via basketball, um, transferred from Seminole High School to participate with the, uh, with the Eagles in basketball. 0-1 on the way from Moritz to Claudia Rivera, the first baseman, misses outside, 1-1. One one. Next year, his little brother, Benaya, will be hoping to make the trip with Trinity back to state. Got to say a shout-out to Mama Rose if she's not here at the ball game, She's home watching Rose Kimmig, one of the sweetest ladies I've ever met. God bless her. Chuck, you're okay, too. That's, that's, that's the father. <laughs> Back <laughs> to the backstop, one and two. One, two on the way is up high. Now two and two. One out, nobody on. We're in the top of the second. No score in our 2A state championship game. Westwood Christian and Trinity Christian. Moritz got a good pace, working quickly. Two, two. Changed him up, and got him to pop it up. It's going to land in the second. Oh, oh and no. boy. It lost it in the sun, I think. Yeah, Van Hook looked like he had a beat on it going out in the short center field, and all of a sudden 
He stopped were, running and it fell behind him. Well, there were no, there were no, no one near him. So unless he just heard uh, feet coming and and uh, was fearful of somebody behind him taking that ball, he bailed on that at the last moment. That's a hit for Rivero. Rivero. First hit of the game for Westwood Christian, so he's the first with one out. So and an, another interesting pop-up that, that drops for a base hit. So each team has a, uh, a pop-up base hit. Lazaro, Lazaro Martinez, the right fielder, takes the first pitch for ball 1-0. and One out now for the runner at first base. Now right fielder curled around toward the foul line. Swing and a miss, and it's one one yeah, Moritz went up in his kitchen, blew it by him there. Both teams down with one hit. Trinity Christian committed an error in the first inning. Well, Trinity playing a little deeper in left field and center. Swing and a miss again, now it's one and two. Uh, another good fastball, just challenged him. Ball ran away from the right-handed hitter. Be hard to imagine he throws anything but the fastball right here. He's got room to take it a little bit outside the strike zone, see if he'll chase. One two on the way in the dirt. And may have, may have, my Miller, it's two and two. May have thrown a cut fastball there. That ball darted into the dirt. So two and two the count. Shadows covering the infield right now as sun is setting. That's fine inside. Now full three and two as Nesto Lorenzo, the pitcher, do up next. Uh, did not want to see the count go to 3-2 as the runners will be in motion now. Defense in the outfield needs to protect against any extra bases or balls to get past him. Runner in motion. Any ball hit to the gap could score a run. And then stepping off is Moritz as Martinez backs off the plate. Uh, number, number eight, the, number eight batter at the plate. Have another full count pitch, three two, swing and a miss, strike three. Third strikeout for Daniel Moritz, who blew it by Martinez that time. Two outs, runner. Looked like he chased ball four to me, Marty. So missed opportunity there. Nestor Lorenzo, the number nine hitter, the pitcher will hit. The runner at first, still two outs. Well, Lorenzo, no at bats during the regular season. No, one for three yesterday, had a single, takes the first pitch for a strike 0 and 1. Wasn't he the late addition number nine hole hitter yesterday? Yeah. We talked about that. Coach wasn't sure. 0 1 is hit foul must into have, the stands. Must have got a good, good uh, message from up above. Picked the right man. Got a base knock and going to hit for himself again tonight. Well, he's behind 0-2 now with two outs and a runner at first base. Only in 2A baseball can you not have an at-bat all season and get to... And there's another base knock. Nine driving to center. Yeah, he gets another hit. <laughs> he had one last night. He gets one tonight. One for one so far as Rivera stops the second. First and second with two outs and now back to the top of the order for Westwood Christian and Robert Hernandez. And he we'll turns it over back to the top. We we'll have a runner at first, number 21, Ariel Bello, running for the pitcher. Robert Hernandez reached on an error. Had a stolen base, left stranded in the first inning. Well, hit a sharp ground ball to third. Yep. Caught the third baseman in the midsection around the belt buckle, bounced off. With uh, two outs, Hagee will back up and play behind the bag. First pitch for Moritz he is fouled back again. It's 0-1. Well, Moritz doesn't waste any time coming right after hitters. He's throwing a lot of strikes. Aggressive fastball. Westwood not wasting any time swinging away. 0-1 the count. 
And Moritz looks to second. The pitch is swing and a miss. 0-2. Uh, well, little ahead of Hernandez. Plus plus fastball there. Moritz really starting to get get it going. So quickly 0-2, and, and the pitch on the way again. Swing and a miss, strike three. Another fastball, Moritz throws it by Robert Hernandez. He has four strikeouts, and Westwood has now left four on through two innings. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left on base. We head now to the bottom of the second. No score between Westwood Christian and Trinity Christian. Then our 2A state championship game here on the FHSA Network. We'll be back in Port St. Lucie in one minute. We go to the bottom of the second. No score between Westwood Christian and Trinity Christian in our 2A state championship game here at the 2012 FHSA Baseball Finals. Both uh, teams' fans are on their feet. Good crowd for this Tuesday night here in Port St. Lucie. And Trinity Christian will have 5-6-7 to up in the top of the second. Daniel Moritz, the pitcher, will lead it off. Dusty Miller and Brady Van Hook also scheduled to hit. As Moritz last night, he played first base. Was one for three, struck out twice, and also had a single. Marty Palmer, Mark Shane back with you here on the FHSA Network. Our second of two state championship games today. Earlier today, it was Union County defeating Holmes County 6-3 to three to win the 1A state championship. First baseball state title for the Union County Tigers. And that is low, 1-0. Lorenzo facing some of the tallest batters he's probably seen all year. Large strike zone to work with. Still missing. 2-0 yep. now. 2-0. and Shadows now descending on the infield and outfield. 2-0 is hit foul off to the left out of play. And it's 2-1. and one. Well, Westwood Christian playing an unusual outfield defense. Huge gap in left center. Left fielder shaded way toward the foul line on the left-handed batter. Right fielder straight away. Center fielder straight away. 2-1. Misses low. 3-1. Well, hitters count here. They traditionally... On Good deck. pitch to look for a fastball and in a zone you can drive. Just one home run for Moritz on the year. And Moritz chops it to short. And that's a play for Cardenas across in time. Good stretch again by Ribeiro. One out as Moritz grounds out on the 3-1 pitch. One out in the bottom of the second. That's your prototypical 3-1 cut right there. Kind of slapped at the ball. Now the catcher, Dusty Miller. My earliest memories of Dusty Miller was him wearing his uh, Seminole pony hat slightly cocked off to the side all the time. Right back to the pitcher Lorenzo who makes the throw to first in time. On the first pitch, Miller grounds out to the one to three of the pitcher. Two outs. Not like a gangsta, but like a country <laughs> boy. <laughs> just, Two a, just a slight bit off center. <laughs> <laughs> Two outs. Here's Brady Van Hook, the second baseman.
Well, we saw the two out rally undo Holmes when uh, Union County in the earlier game scored way too many runs with two outs. Let's see if the rally can start here for Trinity Christian. Eagles uh, for a strike 0 and 1. Looking for a base runner with two outs. Both teams actually one hit for Trinity, two for right Westfield. Right fielder unsure where he's moving them around, but the sun is coming right in from the... Ooh, Van Hook swings it one a little bit low, but it's 0-2 as he gets a piece of it. Right now the tough sun field is in, uh, is in right field. About another 10 minutes before that sun completely sets. 0-2 the count. And the pitch is just a little bit outside, one and two. Good 0-2 location. Something uh, near the zone, but nothing anybody could do much damage with. Two outs, nobody on. Lorenzo looks in, the one, two on the way, misses low and inside, now two and two. So two, two, Two. Two outs in the bottom of the second. The pitch. Chop foul behind the plate down the first base side. Oh, another two and two pitch coming. Trip deuces, that's right. Well, Van Hook extending the at bat. Fouling off a good pitch there by the pitcher Lorenzo. 2-2 again is hit in the left field base hit. Good job of hitting by Brady Van Hook. Stayed with it and lines one into left field. Second hit of the game for Trinity Christian. He's at first with two outs. A uh, good two-strike approach, letting the ball travel, getting the barrel of the bat on the ball in the back half of the strike zone. So runner at first, two outs. So here's Tyler Lawrence, the left fielder. Both pitchers working more with their fastball early in the game here. Haven't, uh, haven't had the need to show many wrinkles. It's fouled off on a play on one. See most every hitter get, get started off with a fastball. So 0 and 1 coming from Lorenzo. This is outside 1 and 1. Yeah, the left fielder comes off the line for the right-handed batter. Play him straight away. Throws to first, running back in standing. One. Yep, two outs to the runner at first base. Two and one the count. I mentioned the two out rally comes comes in handy sometimes. We'll see if they can. Now nah, it'll end the inning right there. A yeah, fly ball into center and on the run. Catch made out there by Robert Hernandez for the third out as Tyler Lawrence flies out to the center fielder and Trinity Christian will leave another runner on base. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. We go now to the third, no score between Westwood Christian and Trinity Christian in the 3A state championship game, or 2A, pardon me, state championship game here on the FHSA network back to Port St. Lucie in one minute.
All right, we have the top of the third. Still no score. And Westwood has left four on base, two in each of the first two innings. Trandy Christian has left two on, one in each of the first two innings. No score. Both teams with two hits. Trinity Christian with an error on the first play of the game did not come back to hurt them. This is the 2A state championship game here on the FHSA network. Marty Palmer to Mark Shamback here in Port St. Lucie at Digital Domain Park. And we'll have Jean Carlos Cardenas lead off. The shortstop struck out in the first. Two, three, and four for the Warriors out of Miami. Got a break as we went on our TV partners to get it together. <laughs> and here we go with Cardenas against Daniel Moritz. Bunning and it pushed Bunn. Moritz has it. Going to have to get to first. Did he get it? No, he missed the tag and Cardenas is safe. Moritz saying he tagged him. Moritz is saying he tagged his hand prior to him sliding in. That was close. And Moritz, you could tell, knew he was going to have to beat him to the bag because first baseman was trying to come cover. So it'll be a base hit for Cardenas, a bunt single. Brian Maple's going to come out and discuss it with the first base umpire. Well, as the runner started his slide, his hands went out to like a shape of a T, and it looked like Moritz slapped his hand before he got to the bag, kind of like freeze tag. Brian Maples in his third year as the head coach. Maples family is uh, Mike Jr. He's at least going to get an appeal from the home plate ump, see if he saw what everyone else saw, what Moritz knew happened. Now we'll talk it over between the umpires. The runner would be at first. Nobody out on the push bunt. And quick conversation is over, and the runner's going to be at first. And when in doubt, safe. <laughs> they didn't. If they didn't know for sure that he tagged yeah. him, if they weren't positive he tagged him, they are going to give the safe call. So the leadoff runner. That'll probably go Hitter. as an infield base hit. That is a bunt single for Cardenas. And now they got him picked off to Kimmig. Kimmig now to the shortstop. Tolentino running him back. Now Kimmig will try to tag him out. Instead tosses it on, man. They're never going to be able to score this one. Now the runner's out as the ball gets knocked out of his. No, he's not. That ball popped out on the tag. No, wow. con no control. Uh, okay. Second life for the runner. Third. I He's on his third life. Well, that all ends up being nothing, <laughs> which is good because I lost track about three throws in. Uh, they had Cardenas leaning three to six, three to six. Four. We had four involved. We had five, or no, we had uh, four again, I think. Uh, but after all that, it's an E6 because it fell out. Tolentino, I don't know if gets charged with an error on he that did. or not. Swing and a miss by Suarez. So I want Tolentino did get charged with the error. Second of the game for Trinity Christian. I thought that Tolentino was able to make the tag and then the ball came out. I don't uh, know how you know the difference, but. Well, it, you got to de demonstrate control whenever you land on the ground or make a tag. If it comes out that quickly, it's it's going to be a safe call. Boy, and they almost have him again. Boy, Cardenas is really confused by Moritz's pickoff move, and Cardenas maybe hurt this time. Up a little bit slower. No, he's okay. But he was half, halfway down to second. It looked like he definitely picked off and stays at first base. So nobody out. The count 0-1-1 to Suarez. Swing and a miss quickly 0-2. And uh, Moritz is probably still a little upset that he didn't take a better angle. Make that play on the runner. I think he could have cut him off, but he kept waiting for the second baseman to be there and he never came so but it's 0-2 now with nobody out the runner at first base well, maybe a strike him out throw him out situation here I don't see more it's throwing a breaking ball here 0-2 on the way is low 1-2 and two. yet to see very many pitches that I would put in the soft category so far hard cutter and a, and a hard four-seam fastball from Moritz. One and two the count. 
It's the third hit of the game for Westwood Christian. Trinity with two. As up high, even now two and two. Westwood Christian advanced to their first ever state final four, defeating Island Christian 12 to nothing, Miami Christian 15 to five, and Sheridan Hills Christian 10 to nothing. Those teams are located. Well, the Warriors are battling here. Tough pitching, and Daniel Moritz, and that was held on to. Yeah, it was, strike three. Suarez swings through it. Good job there as Miller hangs onto the ball. Well, one out. Interesting note there, Marty. If that ball came off his glove and touched any part of his chest protector or the mask and then was held onto, that would not have been a strikeout. But because it hit glove and then stayed in the glove without touching anything else, that was recorded as a put out. So one out. Here is Anthony Penas who walked in the first inning. It's in the Westwood Christian beating Isla Morada, Island Christian. They defeated Miami Christian and then Sheridan Hills Christian on the Hollywood yesterday beat Canterbury Christian from St. Petersburg in the state semifinals. Trinity Christian Eagles were at home as well. Pitch misses for ball through to second is not in time. It'll be a stolen base for Jean Giancarlo Cardenas. So the runner to second base with one out. Pretty good throw down by Miller, but not quite in time. And the count is 2-0. and oh. Now Miller with a slightly three-quarter throwing motion. Ball has a tendency, tendency to, to fade to the right. Pretty accurate throw. Runner just beat, beat the throw. Really stole the base on the pitcher. Got a good jump for once. 2-0 oh, the count. The runner in scoring position with one out. And there's ball three. Alex Hernandez, the left fielder, on deck for the Warriors. Well, Peña's the cleanup hitter. And Moritz pitching carefully in, as you were saying. Coach Maples will come to the mound. Just wants to make sure Moritz understands with a base open. Smart move here is not to give in and throw anything in the heart of the plate. No one thrown in the pen. This is strictly a calm yourself down and get back doing what you do. Let's hit our spots conversation. 3-0 and the count. Moritz has walked one tonight. He's struck out five. Allowed three hits. Now what do we have? Well, now that all the shadows are on the field, Look for the hitters to start picking up the ball a little better. I think they're gonna, they're gonna put him on. Oh no! <laughs> they may not, they may not pitch to him. They may just put him on rather than throw another pitch. Yeah, the lights are on, and like you said, the shadows just a little bit out in right field, but really shouldn't be a problem now. It's, by the way, again we mentioned Trinity Christian yesterday. There, it's three and zero, right? It should be three and zero. Brian Maples, the head coach. Mike Maples Jr. and Sr. are the assistant coaches. Mike Maples Sr. was formerly the head coach. Well, coach Maples get, getting in the head of the umpire and crew here a little <laughs> bit. They're going to have a conference well, to discuss what's going on. I don't know what this is possibly about. Well, the runner at second and one out. This is when we need a uh, umpire, Mike. I agree. <laughs> so that is over quickly. Where do you guys want to go eat after the game? I don't know. Where do you want to go? Oh, well, we're back to action. Three and the count. Pitch on the way is ball four. Bounces out of Miller's glove. Second walk. Second ball that's popped out of Miller's glove. Not sure if that's a... Uh, Actually, Coincidence or something with a new new glove or actually Peñas has walked twice tonight. Those are both the walks were for Daniel Moritz. So first and second one out. Alex Hernandez, the left fielder, will bat. Oh, Marty, how did out how did Hernandez, Alex Hernandez, do yesterday? Strike down, down the, the middle, middle there. Strike on one. Well, let's see. Yesterday, 0 for three with an RBI. Well. I haven't seen too many ground balls today. since the first hard hit one to Hagee. Ground ball would be a 
pitcher's dream right here to start a double play. Well, one is high, one on one. Yeah. Coach Maples doesn't like the trend. He's he's got somebody throwing in the bullpen right now. Ryan Hagee comes over from third, and yes, a right-hander down there. See if we can get a spot. Number 21, Nelson Mendez, who was up last night throwing, swing and a miss. There's a good fastball. Mendez, the 5'9 junior. There is no tomorrow, so Maples wanting to make sure he has everyone ready if needed. One and two the count. I say Maple, Maples, I'm talking about Brian Maples, the head coach. One, two is ooh, just a little bit outside, even at two and two. There you see Mendez in the Trinity Christian bullpen. Yeah, Maples, there's a lot of Maples on that team. Well, Moritz has the stuff to take care of business all by himself via the strikeout, but pitch count starting to add up. This late in the season, logged quite a few innings. Two two is fouled back to the backstop, and it remains two and two. Actually, Marty, the the entire pitching staff for Trinity is very well balanced. You don't have any man over forty innings total. Four pitchers with more than 25 innings. Throw to second, and Cardina slides back in. Cardina has had an interesting trip on the base paths in this inning. Long inning here. Made a single by Cardenas. Looked like he was going to get picked off. The ball was dropped by Tolentino. He stole second. Peñas walked after Suarez struck out, and the pitch misses three and two. Well, if Moritz loses, the batter, the bases will be loaded with a ball never leaving the infield. Full now, three and two. To Alex Hernandez, the left fielder. Pitch on the way, a swing and a miss, strike three. Came back with a fast ball and just threw it right by him. That is strikeout number six for Daniel Moritz through two and two-thirds innings. He struck out at least two in every inning, and that's two outs. Now Josh Sedano with the... Uh, the task of delivering the clutch two out hit. Sedano 0 for 1 with a right fielder playing extremely deep, leaving a lot of room in front for a ball to be dumped in. Sedano with a ground out to first, he's 0 for 1. Yesterday 0 for 3. Line drive to second, nice play made over there by Brady Van Hook, moving to his left on a well hit ball by Sedano, and that will end the top of the third. <coughs> so a single and a walk, Westwood Christian leaves two more on base. No runs, one hit, one well, a walk, an error. Six left on now for Westwood through the first three innings. We got the bottom of the third, no score in our 2A championship game. We'll be back to Port St. Lucie in just a moment on the FHSA Network. And we now head to the bottom of the third, no score. Westwood Christian has left six on through the first three innings. Trinity Christian has left two on base, and we still have no score between these two teams in our 2A championship game here on the FHSA Network. Marty Palmer along with Mark Shamback, and as we'll see, 9-1-2 and two for Trinity Christian here in the bottom of the third. It'll be Nelson Garcia, the center, field, center fielder, to lead it off against Westwood Christian's Nestor Lorenzo. Union County Tigers are the 1A state champions earlier today, defeating 
Holmes County 6-3. First ever state baseball title for Union County. Congratulations to them. Tomorrow we will move over to Class 3A at 10 a.m. More semifinal games tomorrow. That first game between Jacksonville Providence and Tampa Prep. Full day of baseball tomorrow at 4A. We move to at 1 o'clock. Orlando Bishop Moore and Pensacola Catholic. That should be a heck of a matchup. Another 3A game at 4 o'clock between Delray Beach American Heritage and St. Petersburg Catholic. And then a 4A semifinal tomorrow night should be another great ball game. Monsignor Pace and Fort Myers Bishop Vero at 7. Thursday, the 3A final at 4.05. The 4A at 7.05. First pitch of ball to Nelson Garcia, the center fielder. It's 1-0. He showed bunt, drew the third base, and now in on the grass. Garcia was 0-2 last night. Hits it sharply to short. Now and, and then bobbling it and dropping the ball is Cardenas. Probably an error on the shortstop. He made a nice play on it and then just dropped it. First error of the game against Westwood Christian will be on the Warriors shortstop. That ball kind of crawled up his arm as he one-handed one the ball as he was charging. So, a leadoff runner for Trinity Christian here in the third. Here's Tolentino, who's 0 for 1. Giovanni Tolentino. Throw to first quickly by Lorenzo. So, runner at first to lead off the bottom of the third on the air above the shortstop. And the first pitch from Lorenzo misses low and outside, 1 0. <clears throat> nice sunset here tonight, as we've had every night at Digital Domain Park. 1 0 is. Bunted foul by Tolentino. It's one on one. There you see the sunset over Port St. Lucie. A little bit of sunshine left today as we now approach 8 o'clock on Tuesday night, our sixth day of these finals. One on one. It's foul back again. Tolentino almost defending himself with the bat. It's one and two. Back in the uh, box is Tolentino. One, two. And misses for ball two to the third of second. They got him. Nice throw down there by Josh Cedeno. Garcia is out. Two to six. Caught stealing. Really no chance there. One out. Outstanding throw. Yeah, really didn't give any chance for Garcia to steal second. And that's the first out here in the third to count two and two to Tolentino. Two, two on the way. Called strike three. Second strikeout for Lorenzo. Two outs quickly. So after the error by the shortstop, Cedeno throws out Garcia trying to steal second. Tolentino out looking. Two outs. Ryan Thompson, on the right fielder, struck out swinging in the first. This is a little bit outside. One and zero. Oh. Good crowd on hand again tonight here in Port St. Lucie. One zero oh has popped up. Playable on the infield. And the wind blesses with it again, and it's dropped by Claudio Rivera. That ball looked like it turned that first baseman's glove into a high life Sesta. <laughs> it did look like that. Second error of the inning. This one even more egregious than the first. Rivera had the ball in his glove. An E3, and now two errors in the inning. Runner at first with two outs. Pelota, lots of spin. Como se dice spin in Espanol? <laughs> pelota? Yes, the pelota did have lots of spin. See? Si. All right, well, runners first with two outs. 
And first pitch to Kenny Burkhead is a ball 1-0. and My bilingual producer didn't hear my question. How do you say spin in Spanish? Or he didn't know the answer. No, he knows. Yeah, I think. 1-0. Shop to second. Now the play will be made and on to first in time thereby. And no harm Jose no foul Suarez. on the uh, error. Yeah, they get out of it. Both teams have made two errors. Hasn't hurt either yet. No runs, no hits, two errors, a runner left on base. We go now to the fourth, no score in our 2A championship game here on the FHSA Network. We'll be back at the Port St. Lucie in one minute. All right, we go to the fourth inning, and we've learned new words, as we should every night. You should always learn something new. Marty Palman along with Mark Shambach back here in Port St. Lucie. This one took our producer, Keith, and look at that. It's the sun. <laughs> oh, beautiful shot. Thought it was gone. That big fiery ball. Giant orb. Well, the words... Descriptive words for spin in Espanol. Giro, which is a movement of rotation. And <laughs> sesco, which is a description of uh, a directional movement. <laughs> Rivera up at the plate. Fouls it off. 0-1-1. One, one. one for one with a single. No score in the top of the fourth. We knew we had a, uh, a bilingual producer. Giro from director. the uh, Latin that we would get the word gyro Low in, in Anglo. One on one. <laughs> one on one the count. All right. Well, there will not be a test at the end of the program. <laughs> I was told there would be no math. There would be no math. Exactly. The one on one. Up high, two and one. That's Chevy Chase. <laughs> Nobody on, nobody out. Just start at the top of the fourth. No score. In our 2A state championship game, Westwood Christian up at the plate. First baseman Claudio Rivera, who made an error last, and he didn't come back to haunt them. And there's a swing and a miss again. And Moritz now has evened it up two and two. He already has six strikeouts through three innings as the left-hander. Two and two will be coming. Or it's very deliberate on the mound. The two two. Swing and a miss strike three. Boy, a nice looking pitch again. Got him inside. And that's the seventh strikeout now for Daniel Moritz. Well, that's a good sign for Moritz. He's now mixing in the breaking ball with his hot fastball. It's gonna be very difficult to hit the rest of the way if he can throw that pitch for a strike. One out. Here is Lazaro Martinez, the right fielder. He struck out in the second as well, 0 for 1. First pitch is a strike, 0 and 1. The only trouble with a strikeout pitcher like Moritz, your infielders and outfielders tend to get on their heels occasionally because they get bored waiting wow. for something to happen. Now back to the screen, 0 and 2. Got to fight that urge and you never know. It's the minute you go to sleep, they say, the ball will find you. One out, nobody on. The 0-2 on the way from Moritz in the dirt. 
Martinez checked his swing. Or, well, they checked anyway. The first base umpire says no swing. It's one and two. And you see Martinez, the right fielder. <laughs> one, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Another strikeout. That's eight. Well, Marty, I... I do not have a radar gun up here in the booth, and I don't see any scouts with a gun. But from general experience, his fastball seems to be running up there at 91-92 from here. Eight strikeouts. Here's Nesto Lorenzo, the pitcher singled in the first, and the first pitch is a strike 0-1. And, and I'm, I'm being conservative there. And hit to first. Easy play there for Kimmick. He'll step on the back. Three on assistant and an easy one, two, three inning. The first one, two, three inning of the day for either team. Nothing across for Westwood. We go to the bottom of the fourth. No score in our 2A state championship game here on the FHSA network. Back to Port St. Lucie in one minute. Welcome back to Digital Domain Park in Port St. Lucie. We go to the bottom of the fourth. No score in our 2A state championship game between Westwood Christian and Trinity Christian from Deltona. Marty Palmer here along with Mark Shamback looking for a run in this game. Both teams have had opportunities. Westwood especially. They left six on base but went quickly one, two, three in the top of the fourth against Trinity Christian's Daniel Moritz. The Eagles will have four, five, and six here in the bottom of the fourth. Ryan Hagee, the third baseman, will lead it off. We mentioned four more games tomorrow as we have another semifinal day in classes 3A and 4A. And then the championship games on Thursday night, and that will be it. And 3A and 4A will wrap up the baseball season and really the high school sports season in general statewide. Here's Ryan Hagee, who last night hit a triple off the wall in left field that scored a run. Trinity Christian, by the way, scored three runs in the first inning last night. They haven't scored since, so they're now eight straight innings without a run. Of course. They only allowed one run last night, so they beat All Saints 3-1. to one. Well, Westwood watched that game. Apparently, they've got the scouting report. Played in the outfield extremely deep. Right down the middle for a strike to Hagee, 0-1, who grounded to second his first to Matto for one. Infield deep all the way around. 0-1 oh, on the way from Lorenzo was outside 1-1, one and, one, and really, you've got to watch that with Hagee. Almost it went out of the park last night in the first inning. One and one to count. <clears throat> and the one one on the way. Breaking pitch misses high, two and one. And Hagee at 6-5, that ball has to be up there to miss high. <laughs> Actually, he is, uh, he's the 6-7 Hagee. Dustin Hagee, 6'5", who pitched last night. Ryan Hagee, 6'7". The catcher there for Westwood, that is uh, Mr. Cedeno, comes in at 5'9". <laughs> so I wonder Crouching. if this is a uh, FHSAA record <laughs> combined first baseman, third baseman. There's a height. shot right there if you want to get There you go. Yeah, it's almost a foot. <laughs> looks like tattoo or somebody's oh, up there. Jeez <laughs> Louise. <laughs> Tell you, they got a good front line for basketball. 3-2. 
to Ryan Hagee. Pitch well, on the way from Lorenzo. Cedeno runs 5-9, so yeah. there's, there's ball four. Hagee draws the walk. Now the first walk for Lorenzo today has two strikeouts, and Hagee to first lead off the bottom of the fourth. Now here's Daniel Moritz. Marty, how do you walk a guy 6-7? Carefully. <laughs> With purpose. Yes. And we will have a runner, it looks like. Yeah. Well, maybe he's just bringing his. Nope, we'll have a runner first. We're going to have a... Uh, Pinch runner, number nine. That'll be Catalano. Andrew Catalano will run it first. Junior called on to set the table here, make good base runner decisions, and be alert on a hit and run or a bunt play. Make sure he's going to make sure the ball's down before he gets doubled off. Moritz 0 for 1. He grounded the short his first time up. Moritz is only 6'5". Yeah. He's going to have to play play guard or, or forward. I feel bad for Tolentino. He's 5'8". <laughs> He's killing their average. <laughs> Almost everyone else over, <coughs> excuse me, over six feet. Well, the nice thing about the defense or the offensive uh, substitution here is put a little pressure on. We saw a nice throw by the catcher. Cedeno earlier erase a runner. Moritz swing Delay misses. Delay steal. Yeah, and the throw is in time. Man, that was a high throw. But a good play there by the second baseman Suarez to put the tag on Catalano. It was a very delayed steal. And out is Catalano. As Moritz took the strike. Well, the shortstop, Cardenas, didn't didn't give the runner anywhere to go with that. Yep. Uh, took the base away as he was receiving the ball. That's easy to do when the man comes in hand first, head first. If he comes in there with the spikes, uh, it's a little trickier, delicate situation mm -hmm. to be blocking that base. Now 0-2 the count. We have nobody on with one out after the or the pinch runner was caught stealing. O2 Moritz hits it to short. Play for Cardenas. Big throw across is too high. And it took the runner off the bag, or took the first baseman off the bag. As Ribera could not make the tag, and safe at first is Moritz. Well, you wonder there if the first base ump kind of had to, had to even things out there. Even if he, even if it was close to the tag, was another one of those plays where he was had the worst angle of all to see it from the right field angle. If anybody could have seen it, it would have been the home plate ump if the tag hit the man in the shoulder. Well, we're going to have another discussion here. Uh, it's going to be an appeal. It's a simple an appeal, teamwork yep. appeal. Louis Padron comes out and asks that the umpires discuss it, which is fair. It will be counted as an error on the shortstop in E6, and I get another quick conversation and it's over. Two errors on Cardenas today. And so another runner at first with one out and we have a runner again. This will be Franklin Kicklider running at first base. Now Kicklider will be able to run as a courtesy runner, not a substitute. High school rule, you can run as a put another get another player into the game as a courtesy runner for either the pitcher or the catcher. You cannot use the same runner for both players in the same inning. So kick lighter at first with one out, and Dusty Miller at the plate takes the pitch for a strike going on. The catcher Miller ran it out one to three his first time up. Both teams struggling to get a man to third base. That's right down the middle again, 0-2. Miller thought it was outside. Marty, have we had any runner get to third base in this game so far? Was that in the first inning? Mm, no. That was last game. I apologize. They're running together. <laughs> no runner past second yet. It's 1-2 and two to Miller. Brady Van Hook on deck. You know, outfield, standard depth. Miller with good power. One home run this season. 
Swing and a miss and a pitch outside the strike zone. Miller strikes out. Uh, some things don't change. Dusty chased that pitch when he was eight years old, too. <laughs> it was only, uh, it's only about nine years ago. Sometimes you can't change tendencies in baseball, I guess. Uh, he's a good, aggressive hitter, trying to drive the ball. Third strikeout for Lorenzo, two outs. There's Brady Van Hoek, who singled in the second left stranded, one for one. The runner at first and two outs. Van Hook hits a fly, fly ball into center field, but now moving in a few steps and making the catch is Robert Hernandez for the third out. So another error in the inning, but it doesn't come back to haunt Westwood Christian. In fact, there was no runs, a walk, no hits, one error, one runner left on base. We head to the fifth inning. We're scoreless in our 2A state championship game here from Port St. Lucie and the FHSA Network. We'll be back to Digital Domain Park in one minute. Well, we go to the fifth. You see the totals. No runs, three hits, three errors for Westwood Christian. No runs, two hits, two errors for Trinity Christian. The Warriors have left six on base. The Eagles have left four on. And at least one runner in every inning for Trinity Christian. Still no runs across in our 2A state championship game. We'll have the top of the order here in the top of the fifth coming up for Westwood Christian. Leading uh, leadoff hitter Robert Hernandez will lead off. Marty, I was wondering, either of these teams came from more than a couple hours away. You think they get tomorrow off if they win this ball game from school? I would hope so. I don't know. It's getting to be close to finals week. You, know, you never know. They may be right back in school. Well, Deltona is yeah probably about two hours up the road or so. Miami, two hours south. <laughs> it's... It's a good bunt foul, though. Yeah, it was foul. And I don't know. I have a feeling they probably have the day off. I know that uh, the Union County team has the day off tomorrow. Well, neither school were forced to miss school today, I, would, I don't believe, unless they've spent the night and they're just staying down here. Uh, private schools, typically the teachers are very involved and supportive, help them move their work around so that they can catch up if they need to. Oh, one swing and a miss by Hernandez. He's 0 for 2 today. Reached on an error in the first, struck out in the second. Also had a stolen base. Quickly 0 and 2. Moritz already has eight strikeouts. Just five hits in the ball game. Three of the uh, unique variety, not exactly line drives. And we had a, uh, a semi bunt base hit. We had a. Uh, Pop, super pop fly, wind aided double. And we had a, uh, I'll call it a soft flare, just got past second baseman. Ooh, a little bit inside, two and two. Very easily could have been caught, but wind played a little trick on that one, too. Did they give an error on that play? I don't recall. The pop fly? The pop up to second base that fell? No. 2-2 is popped up. That's down the right field line, and it's going to drop. And there's a Texas League flare that finds a uh, home inside the foul line in right field. Just in front of Ryan Thompson in right field. That's the first hit of the game for Hernandez, hit number four for Westwood Christian. They have a leadoff hitter on at the top of the fifth. Well, the sharpest ball so far, in my opinion, hit was the very first leadoff batter. Ball hit created an error off the third baseman. Everything else has been soft and a lot of strikeouts. What's our strikeout total so far? Eight Ks for Moritz. 
Eight Ks through through four innings. He struck at least two in every inning. Innings. Three on the other side for Nestor Lorenzo for Westwood Christian. Well, the good news is he's dominant. Bad news is his pitch counts are racking up. Throw to first. Everyone yelling at the runner to get back. <clears throat> Moritz with one successful pickoff move earlier, but the runner stayed in the rundown long enough and escaped with his life when the ball popped loose. First pitch has popped up in the air on the bunt, and it's going to hit foul. Danger, Will Smith. Will Smith. That ball, <laughs> if it was near the fair territory, probably would have turned into a double play. Got lucky that it went so far foul, neither the first baseman or the pitcher could get to it. Giancarlo Cardenas with a single and a, and a strikeout, one for two. Bunts foul, so it's 0-1-1. I'm catering to my 50-plus uh, audience out there with the lost in space reference. <laughs> well, maybe it's maybe it's on TV land out oh, there somewhere. Oh, here we go with the second baseman coming way in again and swinging a miss. The runner going to second. He's out. What a throw by Dusty Miller. Hernandez trying to steal second. His gun down. Van Hook came all the way up past the mound expecting bunt. I would like to see the size of the eyes on Van Hook as that batter did not square and swang away, covering for the man stealing. And now there's one out. It's 0-2 to Cardenas. How many times have we seen that today? They get a runner on, they get a runner thrown out at second. I mean, there's a reason why we're not getting runners to third base. So one out, the count 0-2 to Cardenas. And Moritz's pitch is strike three. Boy, nice pitch. Breaking pitch again. Pull the Swung string. through. Nine Ks for Moritz. Second time he struck out Cardenas. Now two outs. Second baseman, number 10, Jose Suarez. Now Jose Suarez, who's 0 for 2. He struck out twice. We've had every hitter from the Westwood team strike out at least once, except for Peñas, who's walked twice. Josh Cedeno. And Lorenzo. Another strike, 0 and 1. And now the 0 1 is in the middle again, 0 and 2. Looks like down there near the uh, Trinity dugout. Nice support from some ex teammates. Elijah Kimmig, players wearing Seminole High School hats, rooting for the uh, nearby neighbor Eagles. 0-2, gets away, back to the backstop, 1-2. and two. They're uh, sitting down there behind home, or behind the dugout, I believe. Uh, just next to it, the uh, oh, fellas yeah, right in the orange, it. white, and black hats. Okay. A little community pride there, that's nice to see. Two outs, nobody on. One, two to Suarez. Is popped up on the infield. That's going to make it on top of the dugout out of play. And we'll have another one, two pitch coming. Uh, Moritz has not been behind in the count many times this ball game. Really attacking the hitters. Leading with the heavy fastball. Pulls a change up right there outside. Oh, just, just, just missing. Just outside, two and two. Hey, Crowd wanted it. Very good location with one, two. You know, you don't want to leave a change up out over the plate. That ball was just outside. Umpire saying two, two or three, two. It's two and two. Okay. And fouled and popped again into the crowd. It remain two and two. Well, Moritz is going to have. Plenty of weeks to rest after this ball game. Not so worried about pitch counts as he is staying ahead of these hitters and helping his teammates get back in to hit. And the 2-2 two -two with two outs is hit to third, and Hagee makes the play. Soft line drive. Hit right to the third base for Trinity Christian, and that will end the top of the fifth. So leadoff single for Westwood, but that runner is thrown out trying to steal second. There runs one hit, no errors. Nobody left on base. We head to the bottom of the fifth. No score between Westwood Christian and Trinity Christian in our 2A championship game here on the FHSA Network. We'll be back to Port St. Lucie in one minute.
And we go to the bottom of the fifth, no score. Between Westwood Christian and Trinity Christian in our 2A state championship game. Westwood Christian is out hit Trinity 4-2. to two. The uh, Warriors have left six on base, four for Trinity Christian so far left on as they have two hits and have committed two errors through the first four innings. It'll be eight, nine, and one for Trinity Christian in the bottom of the fifth. Tyler Lawrence will left fielder will lead off four for one with a fly out the center field. Marty Palman, Mark Shanback here on the FHSA Network from Port St. Lucie and Digital Domain Park. The 2012 FHSA Baseball Finals are 2A state championship game. Well, Ooh, that might that have touched the batter. Did. Yes, it did. Hit him right in the elbow area. We'll have a leadoff batter. Marty, I have to retract a statement down there. I did. I got my my glasses to work through the uh, the uh, binoculars. Those players down there rooting for Trinity are not Seminole High School. That those ha those are uh, those are championship Spruce Creek players mm -hmm. down there from the Port Orange area, also in Volusia County. So they're from nearby. That makes sense. There you see Spruce Creek. Where are the Trinity baseball? Shirts and the Spruce Creek hats. Well, that's nice. Getting the rally caps on now. Trying to bring two state titles to Volusia County as Spruce Creek won the 8A championship on Sunday night, beating Miami Columbus 7-1. First state baseball title in the history for that program. Well, the landscape of summer baseball in Central Florida is littered with teams with players from many different schools playing together and blending so it's a uh, it's a community of baseball that everybody knows everybody Garcia a nice sacrifice bunt right there yeah they'll do they get the out of first through they do yes good. he stayed with the bag yeah good job there by Ribera covering first the sacrifice does go five to three moving Lawrence to second with one out but a nice play that otherwise has first and second with nobody out as Garcia Ribera doing a, a, a split there to get the balance and catch the ball but remain on the bag and a good play by Peña's coming from third so the runner gets to second with one out top of the order Giovanni Giovanni Tolentino zo for two Tolentino we were told has sh had some interest shown in from North Carolina A&T, also from Lawson State in Birmingham, Alabama. There's a drive into right field, and that is going to be caught. Was it caught? Yes, it was. Umpire signals a catch. What a play out in right field. Tremendous catch That's from the right Lazaro fielder. Martinez. He saves the first run of the game. That would have come in if he doesn't make that catch. That scores a run. What a play. Two outs. And no argument it looks like from the Trinity Christian side. But boy, that ball hit well by Tolentino. He gets robbed by the right fielder, but a great defensive play by Martinez. Two outs, runner at second, and now it's going to be up to Ryan Thompson, who struck out, reached on an error. Thompson looking to surprise the left fielder who's playing shallow. Take In one over strike. his head. 0-1. Owen won the count to the right fielder, Thompson. Yeah, a pair of fine defensive plays here. This is high and outside, one and one. Keeping the Warriors from looking at the backs of a 1-0 lead. All tied, 0-0. And their defense really playing well here in the bottom of the fifth. There's a blooper. This is trouble. This one is going to fall. Fair ball into right field. It is going to score the first run of the game. Coming in to score is Lawrence. It's an RBI single for Ryan Thompson. Isn't it funny? The ball hit harder, gets caught, but the bloop drops, and it's 1-0 Trinity Christian. Well, that's the irony of this game of baseball. The age-old adage, hit them where they ain't. There was no way anybody could get to that ball. That looked like a Phil Mickelson chip shot a flop shot yeah <laughs> well the inning started with Lawrence being hit by a pitch Garcia sacrificed him over then Tolentino lining to right diving catch by Martinez and then a bloop single by Ryan Thompson gives Trinity Christian a one nothing lead and now a meeting I, prom I promise you Lewis Perdon is out there telling him settle down guys don't worry we had to score a run to win the game anyway yeah our chance will come. We've got we've got our at bats coming. Let's just focus on the next hitter. Let's make a play. 
Only the third hit of the game for Trinity Christian, and it brings in the first run of the game. Here is Kenny Burkhead, who's one for two with a double and a ground out. Uh, both teams have battled valiantly to get to this point here in the finals. You just knew from the way this game was going, it was going to take something freaky to, to break loose a run. Lorenzo's first pitch low and outside, 1-0. Yeah, it was, and it took a two-out hit, too. Well, we've had a few, a few balls hit hard tonight, but not many that have landed in for hits. It's the softer, more... Uh, Fluke plays that have created base hits in this game. Fouled back to the backstop, now even at one and one. Lorenzo in four and two thirds innings has allowed three hits, now one run. Now we get the uh, spray chart with the left fielder playing close to the line and the left handed batter at the plate. Swing and a miss by Burkhead, it's one and two. Center fielder shallow, right fielder respect. Big hole in the right center gap. If Burkhead can jolt one out there, two outs, runner from first base will be scoring. The one, two, swing and a miss strike three. Burkhead swings through the pitch, and it's the fourth strikeout of the game for Nestor Lorenzo. But Trinity Christian gets a run in the inning on one hit. No errors, a hit batter, and one runner left on base. We head now to the six, Trinity Christian one, and Westwood Christian nothing in our 2A state championship game here on the FHSA Network. Back to Port St. Lucie in one minute. All right, we go to the top of the six. We've got our first run of this 2A state championship game, and we'll see if that's enough for Daniel Moritz to hold on to. one nothing. Trinity Christian leading Westwood Christian in our 2A state championship game. Moritz with nine strikeouts. He's walked two, uh, four hits, no runs through five innings. He's had at least one strikeout in every inning of the game so far. Now with Trinity Christian getting a run in the bottom of the fifth, he has a one-run lead. Marty Palman and Mark Shanback back here in Port St. Lucie. So we decide another state championship here tonight. This will be the sixth out of eight. Only two more classes to go after today. Classes 3A and 4A will have the semifinals tomorrow, the championship on Thursday. First pitch to Anthony Pena is hit into the gap. That's going to get all the way to the wall. This is extra bases for Pena. He's going to head to second, and he'll stop there. Hit that ball well, the leadoff double for Westwood Christian at the top of the sixth. Penas has reached base three times today on two walks and now a double. Well, Penas finally up with nobody on. They actually pitched to him, and you can see now why he was pitched to gingerly previously, walked twice prior. And we're going to have a runner. No, it is Penas. Sorry, he just went over to uh, He was to the, getting yeah. rid of his protective gear. That's right. So here is Alex Hernandez, 0 for 2. Rounded to second and struck out. Well, let's see what kind of a defensive configuration Trinity's going to throw up there. They had an odd play where the second baseman was charging straight into the bunt zone, held the first baseman back prior. Oh, but button. in that case, they, they swang away. So this time, more traditional bunt coverage. Button. Pit, yeah. Pitcher's going to cover the third base side. Third baseman's going to stay at home. First baseman's going to crash. Second baseman will cover first, shortstop covering 
the bag at second. Hernandez misses the first pitch. It's 0-1. Oh, one on the way. That's fouled back towards us. So it'll make it below into the stands. Well, it's 0-2. Uh, interesting decision by Coach Padron. Gave up on the bun after just one attempt. Now batter's in a hole. Well, this is a guy that hit almost 500 this season. It's your top hitter average-wise. Just like to see what he can do with the bat with a tying run at second base. But the 0-2, swing and a miss, strike three. Well, and the end, it backfires. As for the second time today, Hernandez strikes out against Moritz, and that's one out. Ten strikeouts now for the left-hander, Daniel Moritz. That's a moment to look back on maybe in this game, a one-run game with a runner at second. Josh Cedeno, the catcher, is 0 for 2. And field now in at first. Uh, Cedeno, a 300-plus hitter. Just 10 RBIs on the season, however. Right-hander in the bullpen for Trinity Christian. Maybe. Not sure if that's Mendez again. He was up earlier. I'll take a peek. 1-0 on, on the way. A swing and a miss. It's 1-1 to Cedeno. Boy, he swung right through that pitch. Moritz is moving the ball around well. And you see that is Mendez, number 21. Right-hander in the Trinity Christian bullpen. Kimmig in at first on the grass. The rest of the infield back. Normal depth. 1-1. Chop to Van Hook. Nice hop for Van Hook. Throw to first is in time to get Cedeno 4-3. And the runner, Peñas, goes to third with two outs. First runner of the day to third base for Westwood Christian. And now it's going to take a two-out hit or something from Claudia Rivera. The first baseman is one for two with a single and a strikeout. Well, defensively, the infielders that get the ground ball quickly need to get rid of the ball, throw it across, not think too much about the runner at third. Barra hits it foul over by the bullpen on the third base side. It's 0-1. This uh, third at bat for Rivera off Moritz. Yes. He singled and struck out one for two. And the single was another one of those non-line drive singles, if I remember right. I believe you're correct. The 0-1. Swing and a miss again. Good fastball. Moritz is ahead 0-2. He is dealing done a good job when he has gotten base runners on. They've had base runners in every inning today except the fourth. Oh and 2 the count. Two outs to the runner at third. It's a tying run for Westwood Christian as they trail it 1-0. The 0-2. Strike three. 20 that pitch outside the strike zone. Beautiful changeup right there. Pulled a string on him and just all he could do was wave at it. Rivera strikes out for the second time today. 11 strikeouts. For Moritz, we go to the bottom of the six of this 2A state championship game. Trinity Christian 1, Westwood Christian nothing here on the FHSA Network. Back to Digital Domain Park in one minute. All right, we go to the bottom of the sixth. Trinity Christian holding on to a one nothing lead over Westwood Christian, our 2A state championship game here from the 2012 FHSA Baseball Finals in Port St. Lucie. We are at Digital Domain Park here on the FHSA Network. Marty Palm and Mark Shambeck bringing you this 2A state championship game. And Trinity Christian with a run in the fifth holding on, trying to win their third state championship in four years. They were 1A state champs in 2009 and 2010. 
semifinalists in 2008 and 2011, so their fifth straight appearance in the AFHSA Finals looking for their third state title in that span under Brian Maples. Well, this game's shaping up to be an instant classic. Gonna go down to the wire. Trinity trying to put some insurance runs on the board. Ryan Hagee will lead it off. Hagee has grounded to second. He's walked. He's one for one today, or 0 for 1 today, pardon me. And takes the first pitch for a ball 1 0. Well, we've seen a little bit of everything in this game. We've seen some outstanding defensive plays, some not so outstanding plays. Hagee swings and misses. And Nestor Lorenzo has pitched well. Some, some above average pitching. He's allowed only three hits and one run through five innings with four strikeouts. And only one walk, but it was a hit batter. He hit Tyler Lawrence to lead off the fifth. That run later came home to score in the RBI single by Ryan Thompson with two outs. That's the only run of the game for either team. Count two and one now to Hagee. Well, Trinity elected to bunt him over. Traditional approach. With the leadoff double. Westwood did not elect a bunt. Tried to drive him in. That's high ball three, so came it's three and one. It took a two-out two flare base hit, though, to score the runner for Trinity, and that's the slim one-nothing lead they hold. Three and one the count. Making pitch high ball four. Well, so Hagee has drawn both walks today from Lorenzo. No one has uh, taken a trip to the bullpen yet for the Warriors. I think we're going to have a runner again. The leadoff walk. It'll be interesting to see if they hold Pat or if somebody gets loose down there. Thought we were going to have a runner again for Hagee at first. We had a runner for him in the fourth. Well, I think you're only allowed one re-entry for a starter. That's correct. So he is the third baseman. He's not allowed to have a runner for him. So he'll hand off his gear at 6-7 to his first base coach. Now here is Daniel Moritz, who is 0 for 2. He's grounded to short. Actually, this is not Moritz. This will be the Dustin Hagee he's going to hit for the pitcher. So he will, the winning pitcher in last night's game, Dustin Hagee, sophomore. Ryan Hagee is senior. Is at first base. So Hagee will, Dustin Hagee will pinch hit with Ryan Hagee at first. Well, I am uh, a little perplexed, but I am assuming that Moritz is going back into the ball game. Bunted by Hagee, and it takes a weird bounce. Goes foul on the first baseline. It's 0-1. I think that, well, perhaps Hagee's a better bunter than Moritz, and they just want to use the best tool they have available to get the job done. That might be the case. Not, not calling him a tool, but... <laughs> In this case, he's an implement being used to advance the runner. <laughs> implement, yes. <laughs> oh, one on the count. Pretty good lead at Those first. Hagees for Hagee. are pretty big boys. I don't want any of their. I don't want their pops coming after me. <laughs> oh, one on the count. Insert foot in mouth. Throw to first again. That's Ryan Hagee diving back into first. Especially when they're both in the game at the same time. Dustin Hagee last night getting the win. A complete game against All Saints. Popped the bun up. Oh, he was in the way of the catcher. That really should have been interference. No call as Cedeno makes the catch. The bunt does not work. Two unassisted. Well, and the out made. So much for the effort on the substitution. So Dusty Miller, the catcher, is 0 for 2 now. Bats the runner still the first with one out. Looked to me like uh, even if Hagee gets that bun up, it's uh, he's going to be out since Sedano's way. Uh, appeared to be in foul territory as well. So one out. Strike right down the middle for Lorenzo. It's 0 and 1. I have not seen a pass ball or a wild pitch in this game. Have you, Marty? I do not have one written down on my scorecard, so best I can tell, no. Uh, we've had limited runners on base for it to affect, but we've had some steals. We had a few called stealings tonight. Uh, Josh sedeno has got two runners he's thrown out. 0-1 oh, is outside 1-1. One one. Westwood is out hit Trinity 5-3. 
Westwood has committed three errors to Trinity's two, but the only run of the game belongs to the trained Christian Eagles. One one is hit to first. This could be two. They go to second for one. Low throw. Back to first in time. They turn it anyway. And it was started over there by Ribera. 3-6-3 three, three on the double play. And a good throw back that time by Cardenas, the shortstop, and Miller is out to end the inning. Another fine defensive play by Westwood. We'll see if that energy carries them into their at-bats. So a leadoff walk, but nobody left on base. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. We go to the seventh, Trinity Christian clinging to a 1-0 lead over Westwood Christian in this 2A state championship game here on the FHSA Network. We'll be back to Port St. Lucie in one minute. Danny Garcia. All right, we go to the top of the seventh, and it will be Daniel Moritz out there back in the game to finish it up or try to finish it up for the Trinity Christian Eagles who lead Westminster Christian 1-0 in our 2A state championship game. We will have a pinch hitter, and it's going to be Danny Garcia pinch hitting for Martinez, the right fielder to lead off the top of the seventh. Garcia was the winning pitcher yesterday against Canterbury Christian in the semifinals, a complete game. Lying only three hits. He's a University of Miami commitment. The junior Danny Garcia. He's going to hit leading off the top of the seventh. And Westwood Christian needs one run to tie and keep this game going. Two, obviously, to take the lead or more. <clears throat> Garcia on the year hitting 7-14, but only <laughs> seven at-bats. But five hits and seven at-bats. Six RBIs and one home run. So, obviously, he's got some power. He'll be a left-handed hitter or two against the lefty, Moritz. Well, first baseman playing back, letting the pitcher know he's got to get over on a ground ball. Third baseman thinking about in the grass just in case he decides to square for a bunt. First pitch low, 1-0. No signs of a bunt. Outfield and right, average depth, center field, routine. And there's a strike down the middle. Taking one a strike. One. Looked like that was definitely a take. One on one the count from Moritz. 11 strikeouts for Daniel Moritz. The one one. Swing and a miss. One and two. Good pitch. Well, Marty, right now there are two types of people out there on the defensive diamond. I'm not sure if there are all the same mindset, but there are. There could be someone out there literally nervous saying, please don't hit me the ball. I don't want the ball. And then there are others. Well, oh, called strike three. It didn't really matter that time. <laughs> and Moritz just said, hey, good morning, good afternoon, good night with those three strikes. Garcia takes strike three. So, so much for the pinch hitter. Twelve strikeouts for Moritz. That's one out. Two more outs to go for another state championship for the Eagles. Uh, Moritz feeding off the crowd, getting into it over there. This is Ariel Bello. Hitting in this spot for Lorenzo, the pitcher. Four straight fastballs. Takes the first pitch for a strike, 0 and one All for strikes. One out, nobody on. The old one on the way. Change up. Change up is low, 1-1. One one. On deck, the top of the order, Robert Hernandez. Well, here comes the night train. 1-1, one, one. low 2-1. and one. Bringing the heater. Ch showcasing the changeup just to, just to let him know. Two, one. 
popped up. It's going to make back. it out of play into the seats. And it's two and two. Robert Hernandez on deck is one for three with a single and a strikeout against Moritz. Uh, Moritz is adrenaline flowing off the charts right here. Takes a step back to take a deep breath and compose himself while his defense resets. Moritz committed to Western Carolina as a pitcher. Coach said he throws a knuckleball. I don't know if we've seen the knuckler tonight, but well, he said it's pretty nasty. That's what his changeup is from yeah, here. I haven't seen it dance much, but maybe that's what the, the off-speed pitch is. 2-2 two -two is jammed inside, found on the first base side by Bello, and it remains. Oh, pardon me, this is not Bello. This is Lorenzo. I apologize. Number 11 still at the plate. I would think if he was throwing a knuckleball, we'd have seen a pass well, ball by now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I can't imagine seeing a lefty throwing a knuckler, though. The 2-2, swing and a miss. No, he fouled it off. Oh. Just got a piece of it is Lorenzo, just, the Just missed hanging pitcher. on to that by uh, Miller. Well, Lorenzo, give him credit. He's pitched very well tonight, but he has been just a shade behind Daniel Moritz so far. 2-2, swing and a miss, strike three. Got him with a fastball outside corner. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Baker's dozen. 13. That's four of the last five hitters are retired via the strikeout. And one more out to go. And it's the top of the order. Robert Hernandez, the center fielder, one for three. And at least two strikeouts for Moritz in every inning, but the fifth when he only had one. So he's had at least one strikeout in every inning. Well, a couple different... Uh pep talks there. One by the catcher fired up. One by the shortstop. <laughs> catcher maybe a little more fired up than the shortstop wanted him to be. Had a, had a second word with Moritz. Hey, let, go get him. <laughs> Boom. There's a strike on one. Hernandez has reached on an error. He struck out on the second. He's single. A mighty performance here by Daniel Moritz. Number 22. The senior. His last game with Trinity Christian trying to win another state championship. Swing and foul back to the backstop. Well, and now it's one more strike. He is really... Marty looking to put a punctuation mark yeah. on his career and his year right here. 0-2, oh and, and he is really dealing right now. He's not struck out the side tonight as the <laughs> infield hole comes in to yell encouragement at Daniel Moritz. One strike to go. I don't think there's any doubt what pitch is coming right here. Here comes the heat. Give him the heater. 0-2. Oh Hernandez, the leadoff hitter, the pitch. Foul back, makes it into the seats. Hernandez stays alive one at 0-2. Yeah, big challenge. Well, three fastballs in a row. I, I'm not so sure the fastball's coming again right here. We may see that breaking pitch off the plate. Two outs, nobody off speed. on. See where Miller sets up. 0-2. Down the middle. He and did he, throw the soft one. And Tolentino can't hang on to it. He has no play at first. Soft line drive by Hernandez. I think it hit Tolentino right in the face. It knocked the glasses off of him. And still alive. They're actually going to call that an error. That's kind of a tough play for the shortstop. Third error of the game. Well, Robert Hernandez, Hernandez. living on the edge. Yeah. Got a change up that he could get the barrel of the bat on just barely with a check swing. So Hernandez at first. That is an error charge to the shortstop. Third error of the game on Trinity Christian. So the runner at first with two outs. Hernandez keeps the game alive. Giancarlo Cardenas is one for three. He struck out twice and singled. Well, coach came in and talked to him. He may... Boy, this is a tough decision. If, if, if they run on this pitch, that's very gutsy. Already picked off one runner today. Pitch high and inside, 1-0. Uh, Moritz slightly affected by the base runner. Missed high for the first time in a while. one on the way. That's down the middle for a strike, 1-1. One and, one. and now he's back in his groove. This is the go-ahead run at the plate. Cardenas, the tying run at first. I think you have to roll the dice and start the runner right here. Did not, and a swing and a miss. One and two. Again, Westwood Christian down to their last strike. I'd go on first move right here. You got to get it. You don't want to have to get two hits to score a run anyway. You got to move the runner right here. One, two, the nope. pitch on the way. Swing and a miss, strike three. And sure enough, 
It ends with a flourish for Daniel Moritz as he is, well, attacked <laughs> on the pitcher's mound. He strikes out the side in the seventh inning. 14 strikeouts for the senior. And the Trinity Christian Eagles, for the third time in four years, are state champions. This time in Class 2A as they beat Westwood Christian tonight by a score of one to nothing. No runs, no hits, one error. One runner left on base for Westwood Christian in the top of the seventh and a great season for their Lewis Padrones team. It's 19-6, their first appearance in the AFHSA Baseball Finals. That close to winning a state championship. But once again, Trinity Christian is on top of the state baseball world as they won in 1A two years in a row, 09 and 10, and this year in 2A. Well, Moritz was a horse that game. He, uh, he may rival, I'll take another for the uh, horse of the year with that performance. <laughs> yeah, what a game for him as he goes seven innings, allows five hits, no runs, a couple of walks. He actually walked Anthony Pena twice. Those are the only walks of the game. He struck out 14, including five of the last six retired in the side in the seventh. Trinity Christian's record 17 and 13 isn't great, but they beat a lot of teams in the high, higher classes, 5A through 8A, and they're the 2A state champions in 2012. You see the Trinity Christian Eagles out of Deltona under Brian Maple, state champs once again. But boy, they had to work for it tonight against Westwood Christian and their pitcher, Nestor Lorenzo, the senior, allowed only one run and three hits and six innings pitched, but just a little bit better tonight was Daniel Moritz. So congratulations to Trinity Christian, state champs in 2A. Congratulations to Union County, the 1A champs who won earlier today. If you'd like a DVD of this game or any game of the 2012 FHSA Baseball Finals, makes a great gift for family, friends, or even team members, especially of state championships like the one won tonight. Be sure to go to FHSASports.com. That's FHSASports.com. All right, we'll do it again tomorrow, 10 a.m., 3A semifinals, 4A semifinals, and then the 3A and 4A championships coming up on Thursday. For Mark Shambeck, for Mike Rydow, and our entire crew here in Port St. Lucie, I'm Marty Palman saying so long. This has been a production of Play on Sports on the FHSA Network. Congratulations to the Trinity Christian Eagles, 2A state champs. They beat Westwood Christian 1-0. Good night from Digital Domain Park.